My name is Gillian Shepherd, and I work for the Belfry as the Impact Project Manager. So today I'm reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 13 to 20. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is such an amazing passage, isn't it? Um, there's there's a whole range of different things in it. A wow moment, um, the obedience of the shepherds, their curiosity, uh, how Mary was taking all this on board. These are some really interesting things happening. And then the shepherds telling everyone else about it. I don't know whether you can think of a wow moment. I think if you literally took the sky, I know a lot of people go wow at the aurora borealis. I've never seen it. I've heard it's supposed to be really wow. I think for me, something that might get close is a been camping up in the North Yorkshire Dales and there's no street lights. So you have this beautiful starry night and the stars just look enormous. And if you see a shooting star, it's so clear. Uh, so that's a wow moment. But to have the heavenly host. So there's not only one angel, but this heavenly host arrive and starting to praise um, God and say glory to God in the highest. Just can't think of anything else that would be as wow as that. But then what I love as well is the shepherds are like, right, well, we've heard the message. Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see what's going on and, and find out what's happened. Um, and so there's the curiosity, isn't there? They're just going to go and find out, which is fantastic. But they're obedient too. They hear this message. They don't just ignore it and think, well, we'll do it later. They do it right away. And they're not just walking off, they're hurrying. And I think that's interesting because the shepherds will be in a field. They'll be surrounded by their flocks of sheep. So I, I never quite know what happens to their flocks. Because when you see like the little nativity scenes, you just see the odd lamb, don't you? I think there would have been a whole load more sheep than that. So they're hurrying off um, and going to find Mary and Joseph. But another extraordinary thing is these are shepherds. It's a very humble, lowly occupation. Um, and so they'd hardly arrive at Mary and Joseph looking really well dressed. And they probably wouldn't smell brilliant either, having been out in the fields. So a very interesting group of people to go and visit Jesus. And isn't that interesting that they are humble and that Jesus was humbled because he came to earth as a baby and he was born in a stable and lying in a manger. That's hardly something you would expect of a king. <laughs> so I think that's very interesting. And, and then we get that little scenario of Mary. We just see that she's treasuring all these things. Um, so they're very precious to her. She's already had the, the, the wow moment herself of hearing she's going to carry the most special, unique child on earth. And then suddenly these shepherds arrive and they've heard the good news from an angel. And so I don't know what Mary must have been thinking. I'm sure she was excited but probably also slightly in trepidation um, and anxious as well, something she'd never come across, but certainly things that she needed to remember and ponder and to reflect on in her heart. And then what's lovely is the shepherds just go off telling everybody, don't they? And that's really exciting, but also astonishing, because in that day, I cannot imagine many people 
hearing those sort of messages from shepherds, generally you would get that information from the religious leaders, the teachers, those um, in the temple, not from a very lowly, humble occupation like a shepherd. So I would love us to think of a few things um, that we can pray. I'd like us to pray for all of those that we know and all of those who we don't know that don't yet know the Lord Jesus. We're just a couple of days from Christmas Day itself. So what an opportunity to pray again for um, people to hear the good news. I'd I'd love us to pray as well for Christians, for ourselves and, and Christians that we know and Christians across the world that we might be reminded again of Jesus's amazing love for us and his sacrifice for us. That we might take that time to reflect again on the message and think about what it means to us. And certainly to praise God for just such an amazing event. So let's pray together. Father God, we praise you as we think of the angels in heaven praising and glorifying you so we lift our voices now and we praise and glorify you for this most amazing message you sending your son Jesus down to earth for us and father God we pray this Christmas and we celebrate Christmas across the world And yet for many, it's another day, a day with family, a day to enjoy presents, but nothing beyond that. And so I pray that for those who have heard your message year on year, and for those where this message might be the first time that they've heard it, that it would touch their hearts, that if it's in their heads, it might hit their hearts, and that they would just suddenly realise that the greatest gift is the gift of your son Jesus Christ and the enormity of you coming down to earth in human form as a baby, fully man and fully God. Just praise and thank you for that and pray for people across the world that that message will be fresh and new and will bring joy to their hearts and their lives this Christmas, Lord Jesus. Amen. And so, Father God, I just pray for Christians around the world who will be hearing this message. We thank you for this news. We thank you as we've been preparing for Christmas. But Father, help us to, as Mary did, help us to ponder on these words. Help us to reflect about what they mean. Father God, if you are calling to us, help us to hear your voice. If you are wanting us to do something, help us to be obedient. If you have a task for us, help us to hurry along, help us not to waste any time, but help us to listen to you, help us to be obedient to your calling, And help us to take action straight away. Father, whatever it might be for our lives, help us to take that action and help us to grow in our faith. Um, We might be fearful about what you're asking us to do. But Father God, I pray that you would encourage us and give us the strength that we need to do these things. In your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. And finally, Lord, I just thank you for Christmas. I thank you for this time left before we have the joy of celebrating Christmas once again, celebrating the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to take the time to read your word. Help us to immerse ourselves in it, to learn more about you. Help us to reflect on what you are telling us. Help us to keep praying, to pray for ourselves and to pray for others who do not maybe have the same opportunities that we do to be able to revel in your word and to learn from it. Father God, we just praise and thank you for this Christmas time. 
and I pray that this time will be a blessing to us all. Amen. Thank you all so much. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas.